so what I will present today, so this is Neutron Source as a tool for innovation. So first, in a nutshell, so I've been uh, putting together uh, very briefly as well, so the, the bureau description of what I've been doing so far, so I'm a, an engineering scientist, so for 20 years I've been working between CERN, Fermilab and DSS, so for 10 years uh, in uh, um, back in Europe, but before that, so I started, so following, uh, so my uh, first uh, graduation in a, um, a French uh, école d'ingénieur, so in uh, Institut Polytechnique de Sévenon, I graduated on a topic of uh, thermodynamics uh, of uh, material and system, so thermomechanics and dynamics. And after that, so I joined CERN, so in 96 to finish my studies, where I was then having the possibility to go to Fermilab uh, for after my fellowship. So this is why I've been working so 12 years in collaboration as well, still with CERN. After that, so I had in parallel as well, so completed my PhD on the, the phenomenology uh, for the superfluid helium. And that gave me also the possibility working between CERN and Fermilab to then uh, be involved in different non-profit organizations. So at CERN first uh, in uh, 98, so I mentioned about Physics Sans Frontières at that time. So where with um, uh, Robert Caillot, who was uh, the co-inventor of the World Wide Web. So we had created a uh, summer school as a, uh, the World Wide Web was a bit new at that time, and it was a Windows on Science and Technology. And uh, while I was then uh, at Fermilab, then I met as well with Ketavi and Steve, and then we started uh, this uh, ASP 2010. So the first edition in South Africa was a great success. And since then, so you can see a bit more of the evolution from the presentation that, uh, that Ketavi gave last uh, week uh, on Wednesday. It was very completed. So I've done as well in parallel some uh, different work, uh, like uh, preparing some uh, massive open online course, some school, all of that as well in parallel with my job, because I, I like the idea to be able to foster uh, international uh, collaboration as well and, and to build up uh, on uh, big projects. So that's an opportunity. So now I'm the vice chair as well of the Forum of International Physics uh, at uh, the American Physical Society since uh, the beginning of the year. That gives a lot of, uh, of, uh, of uh, possibility as well with, for instance, uh, physics matters or different uh, uh, world. Uh, so then um, what I will focus on today, this is to see how neutron can be tools as well for innovation and as well as a disclaimer. So there is my background, as you've seen, so this is more in uh, accelerator science. So and I will speak about how we use neutron and what science is behind that. And this is really a motivation. Why do we build up all those uh, large research infrastructure, whether it is for fundamental physics uh, like CERN, so with uh, uh, trying to understand uh, the, the building block of the universe to what we are doing so with neutron or x-ray to try to better understand uh, the the fundamentals as well of uh, the, um, the, the the science and uh, the innovation so i will have a lot of reference in my slides uh, presenting the work of the real expert so that way with the 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 a pdf you can directly look depending on your field of interest uh, to those uh, aspects so the outline is given there, that's about neutron. Now, why do we have all those different needs? So we have um, from the, the time, so maybe I can change uh, the pointer, voila. So from the time um, here, as you see the economical um, value that are added so from science, it's kind of everything is based on the sociological aspect as well. How science have been over the time, used to build upon that those technology, the different business, and then the organization. So this is really what build uh, the, 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 the possibility now to have a, a strong uh, economy as well, based on, for instance, those three revolutions that I point here, the first one being the industrial revolution, the information revolution or the molecular revolution now, if we speak, for instance, in the case of the European Spallation Source. So I like to point out, for instance, for the case of the information revolution, it's all an evolution based on science, so solid state physics that build up the possibility for the, the World Wide Web to be 
then the business can really build up the life as we have now. So it's really important to, to see how everything is built up on the, the predecessor. And I recall there, so the presentation that was given by uh, John Ellis, so we're exactly at the same way, from fundamental science. This is really the, the, the foundation of our society uh, as per today. But this is next year as well, a potential to resonate with the rest of the society to make sure that uh, everybody see and understand the value of science. So then in uh, this way of thinking, so over the time as well, you can see as well in my parcours, it was the same like triangle. Each time I tried to see how with those research infrastructure in which so I've been uh, involved for those 20 years, we can build up as well synergies. And this is through collaboration. And then you can see here, so I put those links for instance, this is uh, one presentation which was focusing on an accelerator, but you can think for research infrastructure to be the same way. So if you go there, then you will find some different uh, link as well and uh, and way using big data or using all those um, uh, new uh, technology to be able to improve an effective system so that we can really build a strategy. So here I've put the, the European Strategy Forum for Research Infrastructure. Uh, the one in 2021, this is the roadmap, and the 2018, which was really interesting because it lists up all the research infrastructure in Europe. And this is like a clin d'oeil, I would say, for the African um, so forum, the African strategy that uh, you have for uh, applied and uh, fundamental physics. So that's something which is like a, a similar view and how to build up those big uh, laboratories as well. So we can build them up thanks to education. Again, this is one of the main um, uh, vision or, or, or idea that uh, I try to, to, to emphasize and to do as well in my uh, spare time. And, and you really see that for research infrastructure, all of those evolution have been based on even if it's industry, this is through university that they will make use of the different research laboratory. There was here, for instance, statistic from the SRF showing that more than 40% of those different studies will return in any case to industry. So again, remember this uh, paradigm that we were showing before. So that's uh, uh, this uh, way of thinking uh, in, uh, in a kind of um, from the micro to the macro world, but then as well a fractal way to, to think through what can be used uh, uh, in, which, um, in, in each level, and it could be multiplied using the same kind of concept. So is this model adaptable as well to the African model? So of course, this is different, uh, uh, another complex, but this is still a context that could be um, coming as well in the future to the reality, because we really had uh, uh, two weeks ago an excellent uh, a strategy plan as well from the African uh, uh, the user, which really show that there is uh, an amazing capacity and some potential. So from the younger uh, generation as well. So through educated younger generations. So there is really a, a good idea behind that. And we had already, for instance, in the case of uh, uh, the SS, so we had uh, um, an Africa Europe Science and Innovation Summit that just last uh, month, where it was presented as well, this kind of innovative ecosystem, which could be like what we have in Europe, the possibility to, to have a kind of synergy and, and to think the same way as the uh, synergy between the government, the entreprise, uh, the academia, and the capital. So with sometimes uh, the case of the European Union, but as well, we have seen uh, two weeks ago as well, the, the African Union or other um, organization. So all of that uh, to produce uh, um, an impact, a socioeconomical impact in Africa. So again, if we focus uh, on the educational platform, so I show here, for instance, uh, what has been developed. Uh, so since uh, it was 2012, when I just arrived in Sweden, so back to Europe, to develop some more innovative way as well of uh, having a sustainable education through those massive open online courses. So it was based on some summer school that we had, a bit like what we're doing now without uh, the online, but it was like face to face, we define a team, we really build up as well um, a, a group uh, that uh, really have the potentiality to present a topic and a syllabus which is coherent with the need, 
in that case, focusing on particle accelerator. But you can see that since 2019, when it was launched, we have, thanks to those massive open online course, more than uh, so 10,700 uh, um, uh, students. So this is really a, an innovative way. So all of that Coursera is, you just give your email. So this is a possibility to log in. But after that, everything is for free if you don't ask for the certificate. But the certificate is less than 100 euro. So it could be valuable as well for an African model. And this is really one of the things, if you have internet, then you have potentiality. So this is what we have to remember from that. And we are now thinking on developing as well some follow-up project, having some call at the European uh, um, Union, strategic partnership. So that was uh, what we, we first aimed at. And we had uh, another call lately. And we can build up on that and share definitively with uh, the international platform, including especially Africa. I mean, I think it's an important part. Then now, because we are uh, in this pandemic uh, life, so we have to adapt. And then for this adaptation, the online is definitely what made as well the, the different uh, viability as well of the system. And same way, so you have, uh, same if you click on each of those links, uh, on the PDF, you will go directly to the lecture that we have pre-recorded. So we didn't mention so much maybe um, during uh, this uh, two weeks uh, about those online lectures, but they are excellent complementarity uh, material as well to what we have um, presented so far. So for the case of uh, the neutron, so I will emphasize the presentation given by my colleague who are the expert. So in terms of uh, domain uh, of the neutron that could be used to solve societal challenge. We had as well those six lectures really detailed as well by Professor Andrew Harrison from the Diamond Light Source. So he's the, the, the CEO from Diamond Light Source and really gave a, a good perspective on how to use X-ray and uh, um, a neutron, so with uh, all those um, potentialities. So you see, so education, education and collaboration are really vector to permit uh, an innovative ecosystem. So now, if we come back to the case of neutron, so this is neutron user in Europe, a survey that was also conducted so through the European Union, trying to map out uh, so the different uh, uh, need, uh, for instance, here. So this is the type of technique used for neutron technology. But what is more interesting is that what is studied with neutron. So you see that most of those studies are for physics application to try to understand the phenomenology, what is really happening and why we use neutron. I will describe it later. But this as well for, for instance, for, for, for earth and geology, for soft uh, condensed matter, and life science. And this life science, this is really what is the growing demand because now we need to understand, especially with uh, this uh, pandemic, now we need to find uh, an active and a very um, effective way to develop a new, uh, I mean, new, new possibility to, to fight against those virus. So the, this, is, this is something which is extremely important. And then this is why neutron are also fundamental because they will be able to uh, target uh, the hydrogen. And this is what will come next. So um, with uh, uh, an intermittence as well, by recalling the lecture that were given, uh, so last week and this week, as of by Professor Sonia Haddad from uh, um, so the material physics, where she really, pointed in detail at uh, the way we really use into the nanoscale huh, those different um, I mean, phenomenology that will then give the possibility to study and analyze neutron. So here I just show that in terms of lens and in terms of uh, uh, energy, so we have possibility to go down to the atomic level to better understand what happens in terms of position of those atoms and in terms of energy. So what those atoms are doing and how, for the case of life science, those different structures are behaving. So same way you would have possibility. So through uh, this is another um, uh, so way, so because everything is recorded, so you can check at the way it was in detail uh, presented by uh, my colleague, so Andrew Jackson. Uh, so in the case of neutron, so here again, just a very brief uh, summary. So the neutron for the particle physicists that a uh, lot of you are, so this is like a, 
uh, uh, quark uh, level, like being uh, uh, up, down, down, but then for a lot of other persons, so it can be as well a wave, so it's different uh, aspects. So neutron is all in one, I would say. But then let's see first that in the case of the atom, what is interesting to see is that when we speak about X-ray and when we speak about neutron, so the, the light source and the neutron source, this is really the two research infrastructure that we're focusing in this talk. They are complementary by the fact that the synchrotron radiation will have the possibility to scatter the, the electron, so from uh, the cloud of uh, electron, whereas the neutron beam will go directly deep into the nucleus and have possibility to interact and to scatter with the nucleus inside, with the neutron inside of the nucleus. So this is also what is um, very important. So going all the way to the center of the atom. And this is also quite an interesting aspect because the energy function that you need for the case of the photon, this is much, much bigger than what you need for the case of the neutron. So the beam that we are using will for the detection have to be much more sensitive in terms of the detector to be able to see the, the scattering. So, so the technology are similar in terms of the, the phenomenology because of this scattering, but then the detection is a bit different. So this is why tomorrow we'll have a specific courses as well that will describe a bit more those uh, technology to, to understand how to detect properly those neutron beams. So here I just uh, mentioned, I mean, then I mean, it will be described uh, at length after. So I will just mention and show that, as we said, so the neutron, it's all in one. So this is what is really exciting. Like for the, the photon that we described yesterday, um, so that was a wave and a particle. So this is the photon. But now imagine that with the neutron, so you add as well a magnetic momentum. And this little neutron is neutral, as its uh, word is saying. So it means that uh, the exciting thing there is that it has really a, a wavelength that is uh, um, that can cover a, a wide range. So from 0.1 angstrom to 1,000 angstrom. So this is an ideal prop to be able to go at the level of those atomic level, but then to as well spread uh, um, a right uh, variety, variety of um, of wavelengths. So it has to be as well uh, an energy which is equivalent more or less uh, to those vibration mode as well in the molecule. And this is what the neutron uh, has. So it contains or it has this possibility to have an energy that uh, at the diffusive motion uh, in the, the solid and the liquid. So there is those uh, coherent wave uh, in a single crystal. So that can be at the same level. So it has as well this electrical neutrality that makes that it doesn't react with this electron cloud, giving the possibility to go all the way to the nucleus. And it is then possible to do in vivo type of uh, measurement. So you don't perturbate because there is no uh, ionization radiation as well. It doesn't uh, scatter, it doesn't transform as well this electron cloud. So this um, magnetism is as well one of the main aspects uh, that we're using which makes the attractivity as well of uh, this because of uh, its potentiality to, uh, to with the spin. So to be able to see and to better understand high temperature uh, superconductor, for instance, or to develop the, 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 the MacLev or, or the different uh, train that will get the possibility for uh, a faster transport. Uh, so you would see here as well, like for the, um, the storage of energy, because it's uh, also, so with the, 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 the fuel cell, so there is a lot of capacity to understand uh, how all those, uh, um, uh, I mean, uh, uh, scientific uh, um, happening within the material is, is uh, happening. And then I will show you as well some example later on. But what is even more interesting, this is what we were mentioning before, is that for life science, for soft matter and life science, this is really an excellent probe by the possibility to develop new drug huh, because of its sensitivity to the hydrogen atom. So there is uh, this uh, contrast as well that it has uh, between the possibility of detecting isotope, so whether it is uh, hydrogen or deuterium, so there is a different answer. And this is what is uh, uh, an interesting aspect, this, uh, this uh, sensitivity. So in the 
next uh, slide. So this is in words. Uh, so what I just said. So as we said, so electrically neutral, magnetic. Um, so the microscopical uh, uh, microscopical magnetism, which is important, the wavelengths, which is the order of magnitude of uh, the, the lattice that we are interested to, um, to study, the energy in terms of uh, the level that uh, give possibility to witness uh, those vibration mode in the molecule and to better understand uh, how the, um, the, the, the function of uh, different protein, for instance, or different enzyme would be. And this uh, um, so contrast between the deuterium and the hydrogen meaning isotope uh, sensibility. So one important aspect, so I just like list up here, so those different uh, ionization radiation, so with the alpha, gamma, or beta, so you have this ionization radiation that will perturbate the nucleus, but then with the neutron beam, so this is the interesting thing because it doesn't interact with the electromagnetism. So this is really what makes it uh, this perfect rub as a very precise and non-destructive probe because then there is no ionization radiation in any of the samples that you're gonna study. There is no metal oxidation, for instance, there is a reduced risk as well of any artifact. So it means as well that you can reuse your sample. So this is another uh, big advantage. So now if we look in terms of, uh, so the, 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 the main use and the differentiation between uh, the X-ray that's scattered with the electron cloud. So you see it's proportional to the number of electrons. So if you start by hydrogen and you go to heavier atom, so you see the, 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 the probability as well of um, the scattering effect. And then here for the hydrogen, this possibility to have uh, an important um, reaction. And so you can see a big intensity that will be able to identify the position of uh, the hydrogen atom. So if, for instance, you take uh, this uh, uh, Buddha, which is made out of metal. So if you look with your X-ray eyes, then you will see the metal. So you will see the outside of that because it will be sensitive. So you make an X-ray of your Buddha, this is what you get. And now if um, you are using neutron, so you will be not sensitive to the metal because for some of them, so that will not be erecting, but you can see that inside there is potentially some um, some uh, some uh, element that are uh, adding as well more uh, hydrogen, for instance. So all those developments so over the the last forty years have been really uh, giving some breakthrough. So when you imagine that from the time of the X-ray, so that was with uh, uh, Gigi Johnson. So in uh, in uh, 1897, uh, and then Rundstrom in, uh, in 1895. So all this evolution from X-ray to neutron now, so give us much more capability to see through. So we can have, um, as well here, the, the, the idea of through those uh, uh, observations of the hydrogen atom, a better understanding of life science and soft matter, as I was mentioning. And just to also recall that in terms of quantity, the hydrogen atom, there are more than 50% of the atom uh, in the biological uh, macromolecule that uh, we will be able to study. So this is really important to know where the hydrogen is. And you see that if you use X-ray, you completely ignore those hydrogen. Uh, atom. So the position and then the energy that uh, those atoms are can only be seen thanks to neutron. So here you see, for instance, with X-ray and with neutron, how a molecule of water would look like. You see, with sensitivity uh, more for the uh, the case of the oxygen, and then for the case of uh, the neutron, you really see in a better way the hydrogen. You can see as well the the binding that uh, give a better understanding so through uh, all of that. So now when we are looking at tools, huh? so this is using so those large scale, so light source or neutron source. So I refer here as well, so to the presentation of uh, uh, so Professor uh, so Thierry Almeida, but they are also in our courses, uh, different presentation coming uh, uh, from a BNL that uh, show the detail of light source. How does it work? And what are the different um, you know, so possibility to operate, but as well uh, the, the challenge, the societal challenge that they're, they're fixing. So here, just compare with the neutron. So 
in terms of uh, uh, so the, the, the particle beam, so this is uh, those uh, beam of neutron, whereas uh, for the synchrotron light source, so you have uh, those uh, photons that will be um, so emitted. So you have the possibility to uh, look at uh, those different uh, interactions uh, between uh, the electron surrounding in the case uh, of uh, the X-ray, but then you go deeper into the matter for the neutron. And then I, I will not pass to all of that, but this is also material that are summarizing what I was mentioning before. In terms of application, so the emphasis here of uh, uh, the, the magnetic uh, structure, like high temperature supraconductor, and the different understanding on how uh, the strain as well in the metal could be um, visible as well, so using neutron. So the, the field of interest are, are very broad. And, and I just as well summarize here with this um, um, little uh, cartoon and then with the different um, thematic as well, that there is, uh, thanks to this deep penetration, so the, the probe uh, that has this, uh, all, all this uh, fundamental property that uh, neutron has, has possibility to open a lot of, uh, of new field. So, field in terms of energy. So like with the photovoltaic, for instance, we can better understand how uh, all the different um, material that will be composing uh, those uh, uh, photovoltaic uh, uh, equipment so will be um, more um, more performant. So for new material as well to develop a new type of, uh, of, um, of um, potentiality, for instance, for metal that are, have a very high uh, young modulus or, or different conditions that we could not uh, study uh, elsewhere. So with uh, health, this is again the important part, so the health and the food, the advantage of hydrogen, because it gives as well a large um, capacity to understand at the level of the enzyme, uh, all the, the function that they have and how they are transforming uh, the, um, the different uh, component uh, and building block from, for, for building some as well better understanding to try to see the different uh, inhibitor for those enzymes as well. So that would be then the definition of the, the pharmaceutical uh, um, medicine that uh, have to be prepared. And uh, for the food, the possibility as well to understand better how the lens or the life as well of those food could uh, be uh, better by the chemical process being uh, uh, well understood and the enzyme being Prevent it. So I just uh, here show again the different uh, fields with uh, an emphasis on the graphene because I really like as well the presentation uh, by Sarah that yesterday, uh, and then the capability as well that this graphene has to build up our future. So this is uh, uh, this um, an obtanium that might not be the perfect or the material that we will find in the future, but why not? Maybe this graphene is this one. Who knows? So you see those different fields and you can look at a, a specific application there. So now, what do we see? This is all about beam scattering. This is all about diffraction and about spectrometry. So what we, and this is also a reference to the, the course of, uh, so Professor uh, Haddad, that showing the position of uh, all of uh, those atoms. And then here, in the case of the neutron as well, the energy that they will be able to, um, to, to, to share. So this uh, understanding gave the possibility in 94 to uh, receive a Nobel Prize, so to have uh, on that field, so two, um, so those uh, two gentlemen that really are uh, the father of uh, what we're using uh, for light source and neutron source. So the neutron energy, now I'm just showing here the fact that we have uh, um, three different uh, levels that we like uh, to use with, um, with the, the neutron source. So cold neutron, thermal neutron, or hot neutron. So depending on this energy spread, so which correspond to the temperature. So if you remember the, the first slide and different wavelengths. So again, like uh, this energy level being in milli electron volt. Huh? So the, the, the need to have a specific uh, uh, instrumentation. So the, the bright peak and the diffusion, so same way, like uh, it was uh, 
Um, so mentioned yesterday, having the possibility to scatter whether the X-ray and the neutron at the level of the atom, and then to measure all this pattern that will be seen. So just like in summary, we can say that you have the possibility to attenuate or to compensate. So you see, if you have a beam of neutron arriving and uh, scattering on a lattice, then the resulting, depending on where you are looking at, will give you uh, a signal that will be then able to be analyzed with uh, uh, this pattern. So that's um, what is uh, here to so explain as well that if you keep a wavelength, so you can have one fixed uh, wavelength, so monochromatic or uh, a, a wider range and have possibility with this fixed wavelength to detect with a different angle and then to have the reconstruction of your lattice. You could also have with a fixed detector the possibility to change the wavelengths and to adapt the measurement. So this is what we call the, the time of flight. So I just show here, so in terms of all those uh, different results as well that are provided give you an idea of the, the property of the lattice uh, that you are measuring. So in that case, also, I refer to the presentation uh, from uh, Professor Hadan. So then uh, the neutron scattering technique. So here I just show as well, same way. If you have a beam of neutron, your sample, and then what you will be measuring, this is the intensity that will be at a different position, so in your detector. So it means that you will give the possibility to have, you see, the, the understanding of where those atoms are. So you are the detector here, and the sample is here, and then the source with this fixed wavelength give the possibility to have an intensity that can be described. And depending on this intensity, depending on the position, so the, this Q, you will have um, some, um, some pattern to be able to recognize the shape as well of this sample that you are observing. So this sample that will be there. So that's really an interesting thing. And for more detail, I refer as well to the, the presentation of my colleague, an expert in this domain that is uh, providing uh, so a deep understanding on how it really works. So uh, that's uh, the, um, the presentation. So in terms of techniques, so there is a broad range as well of techniques. You can see here that all summarized depending on the energy level and the time. So that's the two uh, important part, but as well with the, the wavelengths and the lens. So everything is gathered there by adding so the different uh, um, interests as well. So on the periphery, you can see those aspects. You, you see that for the question of lens, of course, particle physics with fundamental particles are at uh, the extreme uh, side of the of the, um, the spectrum. But then uh, we start from imaging. So it means that even um, you can have a large uh, uh, piece of um, equipment being able to be scanned as a sample depending on uh, the different technology that you are using. So there is a complementarity as well between all those different techniques. So you see, for instance, that with X-ray, NMR, or, or microscopy, uh, as well, uh, um, cryo-electron microscopy is uh, um, something that is very useful for the case of uh, structural biology. But in the case of neutron or ADSS, we're really using so the small angle neutron scattering, the reflectometry and the diffraction that is then used. So this is what uh, I will uh, present some example here from. So on uh, the left, so you have uh, an understanding of the, the, the microscopic behavior from nanostructure. So this is, as we were mentioning, uh, how can you build up a material which is um, very strong? So you see here, for instance, to prevent the, those cracks or those uh, uh, potentiality of, uh, of seeing um, um, a, a weak performance on a metal. So all those analyses could be done as well in situation where you put pressure on those samples. And this is one of those simple environments that we're building at ESS to get uh, some very, very high pressure level. It could be as well in hydrogen uh, condition, or it could be as well in cryogenic condition. So we have an environment that will give us a possibility to follow up uh, the behavior of uh, 
an engineering uh, piece of equipment as we see here, but as well a uh, uh, potential uh, potentiality for some um, some some um, some enzyme or some different equipment. But here on the right, I show the case of uh, um, so this is a um, neutron so that are used as well for oil and gas exploration. So this is a project which is essential. So as a, an effort to better understand the, the the behavior of the shell gas in the shell. So they are um, so those two aspects so that we put in contrast so using neutron and X-ray. And by looking and comparing uh, with deuteration, so that's what I will come a bit later on, uh, having the possibility to identify the, uh, what is uh, the, the, the organic part in those samples and what are the, the different um, um, uh, metal or material that are part. So in red there, so you see, so this is the organic part and in uh, green, so this is the inorganic part. So then you can recompose and rebuild uh, the, um, the sample. So as well from clean energy technology, so I will not um, spend too much time on that, but same way X-ray or neutron, then you can better understand how to build up those photovoltaic, uh, effective photovoltaic uh, um, technology. So by better understanding each of those layers and how they are uh, working. And then as well for, for polymer, so as well the possibility to better understand uh, the composition could be as well in some uh, environment where they are stressed, where they are cold, or where they have a, a different um, um, limit uh, condition at, uh, used at the limit. So then uh, the uh, case as well for neutron uh, to use uh, to be used as well on clean water. So I will not detail this as well, but I wanted to put uh, on those slides the reference, which is I think very useful and interesting as well for the case of of Africa to try to to better understand um, how to extract and how to to, to use uh, uh, so those clean water. Now, if you will look at life science, because that was as well one of the topics that uh, I felt was um, important for, for our uh, community as well at, uh, at the SP, because we have a lot of uh, medical, uh, medical physicists. And this is interesting to look at who are also uh, investigating uh, the use of enzymes. So who are so the, those biocatalysts um, to, to understand this um, this function and the structure, which means for uh, life science, this is something which is fundamental. Uh, and I hear call as well uh, to this link uh, where Fisher, who is uh, from Africa and uh, as a biologist also at ESS, give a full overview on what are the, the potentialities. She's working a lot on those enzymes and then has been as well doing a lot of effort at the time of COVID to try to have uh, uh, some uh, some uh, some good um, I mean breakthrough somehow. So then, um, in terms of uh, the different condition in which uh, so this uh, different sample can be used could give as well a better idea in terms of uh, what uh, how all those different um, um, uh, how those different uh, medication for instance could be used while they are developed, or you can as well have those imaging. So if we look now in the end of the spectrum with the larger scale um, sample, having the possibility to, to better understand uh, what uh, those uh, aspects are. And here, so I recall as well, if you want to know more about the life of the, the ribosome, so we had uh, the chance as well to have reserves uh, uh, so Adayuna, who gave um, a very interesting talk uh, that was in uh, March, and unfortunately, so you, I mean, there was a conflict of interest with the SP since uh, we had a dialogue uh, about who was presenting on that day. So we didn't uh, emphasize too much on the SP uh, community, but it's all recorded and online. So same way you can click there and you know more about life science and how she has been using crystallography to be able to produce those samples and study those samples. So for life science, so it's kind of uh, an equivalent way of thinking. So here in terms of the different techniques that I use, the different um, lens that I use with uh, application to life science uh, a sample. So I don't uh, spend too much time on that. And then same way, what is important here is the fact that there is the potentiality as well for those isotopes to recognize the hydrogen 
and the deuterium. So then this label uh, can be done. So thanks to uh, different ways. So you see here, so a, uh, a possibility to get some uh, clean or some uh, a pure sample. So that's uh, what is done. So at uh, uh, ESS as well by Zoe Fisher. Uh, to try to reconstruct by some technique that I used, um, we call it contrast variation. So it means that you can really uh, understand, uh, depending on how you dilute, depending on the solvent in which you use your sample, so that it can understand, for instance, the membrane and the position of each of those atoms. So depending on the solvent it is in. So there is this contrast variation. So with, uh, with stable uh, deuterium isotope that can really be uh, selectively uh, a highlight uh, to the, the, the biological molecular material. So same way, so I refer to uh, the presentation given here. So in this series, this is a full series of four presentations uh, on the uh, CERIC and Accelerate platform. So same way, you are more than welcome to link it. Uh, I just uh, show as well here the reference to another very interesting uh, article that, that showed the small angle scattering. Uh, with uh, reflectivity, <clears throat> uh, so this is um, this technique that gives possibility to better understand membrane. So here for the case of the SS uh, two experiment called Estia and Freya. So I just give here as well um, an example on how it works with your uh, neutron beam. You have possibility to detect and pass through each of the level, and you can see here this sandwich where the intensity which is measured will give you the possibility to better understand the composition and then uh, the, the function of each of those atoms at the different level. So uh, another example here, which is uh, the use <coughs> pardon, and the applicability of uh, this, um, this uh, protein. So we have here in the case of uh, a fugus, so you see in uh, green, this is uh, this um, uh, fugal that is deposed on the membrane. But then with the application of this drug, we see that uh, uh, it depends as well on this lipid phase. And you can really have possibility to see the uh, function that uh, each of those layers have thanks to those uh, techniques. So that's how it's explained here, for instance, where you see those green, it's the protein that is coming so from the wheat, and then you have the possibility to better understand how to uh, have um, um, uh, food uh, which can last longer by better understanding how those uh, enzymes are working. So the NPX, so this is uh, standing for the, the neutron uh, protein crystallography, so which is very uh, effective uh, for uh, getting sample that will give possibility to be uh, complementary as well to X-ray. So here, for instance, same way with the molecule of water, you see with the X-ray, the, the, the visibility for uh, the, uh, the, the, the center, so for the, um, more for the, 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 the oxygen, whereas uh, with the neutron, you have more emphasis on the bounding that exists, uh, the hydrogen bounding. And the hydrogen bounding, so this is as well the difference between this green uh, surface here, this is what is seen by um, neutron, and then what is in red is what is seen by X-ray. So then you can do the differentiation and see the function and recombine as well the activity of, uh, of those enzymes. So in this case, so this is also one of the, the proteins. So the structural and functional observation of, uh, of enzyme. And again, it's good because there is no ionization radiation in the test of the neutron. So then you don't have any secondary effect. So for the, the pharmaceutical uh, aspect, so this is really a, a big, uh, big breakthrough if we can get a better uh, use uh, uh, of all of that. So the, the ligand binding, for instance, in protein is also what is uh, investigated, and uh, there is a, a large field on that. So here, I just show those uh, type of uh, uh, crystal because then this is the difficulty. The difficulty is always to create this crystallization from those samples, those NPX uh, samples, to be able to uh, use them finally, so in the neutron source or in uh, the, um, the X-ray uh, with, uh, for instance, Biomax at uh, the 
at the max four, but with NMX here at ESS. So this I will refer as well, and I will delegate, uh, um, I, I will uh, give the, the possibility for, for Calliope uh, uh, camera the, tomorrow to speak a bit more on that, because we have this NMX, uh, this is a macromolecular uh, diffractometer who will uh, uh, give really the possibility for, for, for a lot of uh, uh, structural biology and, and discovery that uh, will be um, important. So simple needs, so that's what we mentioned before, the, the possibility and the capability in situ at Loon, in Loon to be able to prepare the sample. So I show here, so this is uh, the, 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 the famous enzyme uh, from Zoe that she has been working uh, for years on. So this is, uh, this enzyme is the, the, the carbonic um, antitrax uh, transport. So we call it the CA. So this is easier as well to, to, to track. So this is an enzyme in green that you see here, where you see um, the bounding and the interfacing with uh, some zinc. Uh, so we call it uh, a metalloenzyme. So this is uh, because there is zinc uh, in those uh, active uh, um, sites. So this um, enzyme, so she, it, play, it plays really a, a large role uh, in uh, the cancer, so as uh, the glucoma for the, the eye disease uh, or, or the obesity. It has as well uh, some kind of uh, uh, reaction as well for high blood pressure. So this is an enzyme which is very important to understand. So she has been working in that field uh, for, for many years and still um, develop some breakthrough on that. So here I put as well the link from some development. So looking at uh, the uh, fermented milk. So this is a product uh, in Scandinavia, for sure. Um, not seen this in America or in, or in France, but the fermented milk, uh, which uh, for its conservation, so need to have uh, um, um, different, uh, to be described, to be stabilized. So this is a study that has been done in this case, so by Dupont, mm, to be able to uh, have long-lasting uh, products. So you see with industry, there is a lot of interest as well for them. Uh, for uh, the medical aspect, for the health, you see here as well the replacement of the cornea by um, a special um, uh, hydrogel that is uh, designed thanks as well to a better understanding of the structure. So hydrogel, so a lot of hydrogen, so to better understand how all those different um, so atoms are, are working together. So then I finished by the, the last part, which is the ESS itself. So what uh, we are doing there and how we are getting uh, so through all of um, those uh, uh, slides. Here we go. So with neutrons, so you can get neutrons. So since it was discovered, so in 32, as we said, but said we, so we can have mainly reactors that are producing neutron source, but those neutrons have low uh, brightness. And this is the difficulty because we would like some high intensity, uh, high bright uh, um, uh, flux so that we can get uh, this energy high enough inside of uh, the nucleus. So this is why since, uh, so, the, the, the end of the 70s, uh, we have now some um, so spallation source that are based on accelerator. So maybe this graph is a bit more interesting because it really shows that the ESS will be a breakthrough with the possibility to have flux which are much, much, much larger. And those flux, just remember that you don't, you, you want flux that are really large so that you can really get a good measurement. This is all about the resolution. So we show here, for instance, the case of fission by comparison to the case of spallation. So you know uh, about the, the fission with this uh, reaction, the, the chain reaction. But then for the spallation, this is a controlled way with those accelerator driven technology, which give possibility to limit the number of neutrons that are produced. So we are using tungsten because this is solid. We could use uh, uh, um, mercury. This is what they're using at SNS and in GPOC, so in US and in Japan. But uh, in Sweden, we are with the, the safety environment uh, very uh, careful. So we wanted something solid. And this is then the possibility to have flux that still uh, will give uh, some better results, sorry, than uh, our colleague, I mean, one day we hope. So the advantage as well of uh, the ESS, this is to have some long pulse uh, to be able to better understand 
this structure of uh, of the um, of the, the different lattice that we observed. So 2.86 milliseconds, whereas typically this is 100 milliseconds, microsecond that are used uh, for the SNS of uh, the, the GPARC. So this is as well uh, a challenge because we need to make sure that uh, those pulses uh, can uh, stay stable during that time. So how does our ESS machine work? So we have protons that are injected going so at almost the speed of the light to the target to then generate this spallation with uh, those large quantity of neutron that are then read so through the instrument. So that's uh, in, a, in a nutshell. So we have uh, put a lot of attention for the energy perspective as well. So because the electron, but because of the production um, of uh, energy to accelerate uh, those protons are very um, I mean, energified. So meaning that we, we need really to cool down those uh, klystron so that we can uh, accelerate um, in a better way. So that's uh, being responsible, renewable and recyclable. This is in Scandinavia as well, one of the motto that gave possibility to have uh, the ESS build in Sweden rather than in Spain or in uh, uh, Hungary. So this is collaborative effort. So you see here all the partners which uh, for more than uh, 15 years now have been working together on different uh, prototyping, partenariat, collaboration, defining the, the concept of uh, DSS. So here I briefly speak about uh, those different um, so field of interest uh, that each of uh, those instruments which are split between so large scale structure that will analyze diffraction and spectrometry. But you see that for instance, they are only little capability as well, or only with Odin, the possibility to better understand uh, the archaeological inherited. And this is an important part potentially for the African light source, uh, for the asset that you have there. So here I mainly show so the distribution of all those uh, instruments by country. So this is in kind. So it means that most of those countries have their own institute and they work together with us to define the specification of the instrument that we need to be able to be uh, at the state of the art for getting uh, the right measurement from those small angles, for instance, scattering for the different aspects. So we saw many of those two in detail, but then um, uh, Calliope can describe more tomorrow. So here I just saw as well on another uh, format, like we, we have the NMX. So the NMX, this is really for this um, structural biology. So where we will have a better understanding of uh, of uh, those uh, behavior of the enzyme and potentially developing the, the perfect drug. So beard, so which is more for engineering diffractometer, you have the C-spec and the B-frost that are focusing on uh, the, the, for instance, high temperature superconductor because they are very sensitive as spectrometer as well to, to those capability. And then each of those instruments, as you see, have uh, uh, their different function. So whether it is, uh, so uh, like here, the small angle are here, and then uh, you have uh, the reflectometry that uh, is better described here. So I just show here uh, an example of the beer instrument. So I will not spend too much time, but as you see, we need a lot of shielding to be able to um, have a safe environment. So that's also one of the things that we fight against to get um, all those permits. So you see here that if you have your proton beam accelerated to the target, you need to moderate your neutron, resulting neutron from the spallation. So this is what is done. So thanks to so helium, which is cooling, but then hydrogen, which moderates uh, those and decelerates uh, those neutrons. Then you have those uh, uh, thermal neutrons and then cold neutrons so that you can get your sample. So I show here only the, the function of uh, uh, the target. So we, you see the, the, the flow of helium gas that is cooling the uh, beam, which is then um, hitting the target. This is a rotating target, as you see here that turns so that there is those five megawatts that are distributed and cooled down at the level of the, 
uh, at the, the, the required level. So the definition and the specification for each of those components will depend, of course, on the material, because this is a huge uh, flux as well, or huge radiation that uh, they will have to endure. So there is a lot of study that are done on material to be able to then have the, the right uh, component. So the target is in the center. And I just show here, for instance, the case of uh, the need for this target to be then um, changed. And then you have an active cell area where uh, remote handling is used. So all of that really make use of state-of-the-art equipment for remote handling, but as well for the cooling capacity, so which is two prior plants that are separated because for the hydrogen, um, we use a liquid hydrogen so to, to be cooled then by helium, liquid helium, and this is um, so separate equipment. So a lot of details that, that uh, I, I don't have time to, to pass through, so I just scan so that you have at least uh, those uh, figures in head, or you can come back to that. A lot of very exciting uh, things that uh, you could develop from that. The tungsten, so this is really the, the potentiality then for this palation, so very interesting. A lot of issue then with the quality of everything, because you cannot have any dust. Imagine the dust then could be radioactive, so then that could become a problem. So we had just reworked those 7,000 brick uh, that are provided by the, by the, the, the Spanish uh, in kind, so quite some challenge. So uh, here I show the active cell with the, the, the capacity and the, and the need to move in and out. Uh, so the target wheel from uh, so its location. And you have here, so this is all the service. Huh? So there are 60, uh, uh, there, uh, there are 26 uh, different devices uh, that are built to be able to transport and to install. And then you have here uh, a prototype, uh, a test stand that uh, gives possibility to test everything. So the basics, so this is what we had, but now I will focus on the accelerator. Oops, sorry. Accelerator, which is long-term, we are building everything for five megawatt to GeV. And then for that, so we use, or we have changed as well the design to optimize and have 62.5 milliamps uh, at the proton beam. And then this length of the pulse, as we said, long pulse, so 2.86 milliseconds, are at 14 hours. So this is not a CW, this is really like a, a, a pulse one, which a duty factor only of 4%. So the stage approach now brings uh, the capability as well, only for 2025, huh, to get a two megawatt with 15 instruments. So here I show the aspect of the uh, supraconducting linac, because this is what I've been uh, responsible for the over the last uh, years. So with um, accelerating gradient that are also the state of the art, you see up to 20 megavolt per meter to be able to accelerate uh, all of those uh, parts. So I show here uh, as well, this is a reference to the course uh, from Professor Wong, so I will not pass in detail, just to recall that uh, the electron being 2,000 times lighter than the proton, you are relativistic very quickly, but for the proton, you need a lot of energy. So this makes everything a bit more complicated. I don't recall to the Lorentz and the Maxwell, so you know everything by heart, the right of the, the, the free, um, um, la, la règle des trois, so that you can accelerate your proton. So you see here the electric field that gives the pulse to the proton. And uh, the ingredient that you need, so that are, uh, so if you want high field, the magnetic field, then you need uh, supraconductivity. So between, so the magnet or the, uh, the, 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 the accelerator, uh, which are the accelerator based on those cavity, you need vacuum to be uh, perfect and you need the cooling system and then the different uh, uh, control uh, and, and recording of everything. So I just uh, pass very quickly because uh, there is definitely no time for that uh, to the, the environment, which is the superfluidity, so we can come back on that uh, as needed. Uh, the environment which for those cavity have to be in superfluid helium. So you see- oh, Hello, Christine, if you can wrap up in the next two minutes, that will be appreciated. Yeah, that will be. So this is uh, the possibility here to see, for instance, uh, um, as well the link. So same way you have the link to look in detail at the uh, radiation that will be um, I mean, uh, handled by this accelerator for the material, what we do, we set the threshold to have uh, 
uh, less than the, so 0.1 watt per meter of uh, energy depots. So you see here, so by FLUCA or by March, so this different uh, uh, density um, deposition. So innovation, for instance, in the term of the modulator because of those 14 hours that we were speaking about, and we need really to have so 115 kilo volt. Uh, uh, for those long pulse, 3.5. So this is state of the art, and this is really something that uh, could uh, take all the energy and, uh, and the grid stability in Lund uh, depend on this capacity to have modulators. So that's big, big flow. So the um, control aspect, so more than 1,600,000 uh, different points. And the last uh, aspect is really to show how all of those uh, different uh, technology as well. So with transfer of knowledge and technology brings a better understanding with the use of virtual reality. This is how we have everything now uh, implemented at DSS for review. So it's really convenient. Uh, here, I just call as well for CERN. So Mar uh, Marco was uh, potentially or could make use of that. So this is some, um, uh, some smart way for intervening as well in Atlas or in any way where you have a, a direct visualization of uh, uh, the energy that you have. So through those uh, different camera. And here, so a way with, uh, as well a semantic way to understand through uh, machine learning uh, and deep learning, how to get uh, um, a better understanding at uh, the, the different uh, uh, publication that you need. So that's uh, uh, simply then the list of people that you can contact for expertise and for, uh, for, for the, the explanation, the different books here that I give uh, to, uh, for your reference. And here, so the concluding comment that are showing uh, that uh, neutron are really ideal probe uh, to serve uh, the, um, the society in one sense. So there is, of course, uh, uh, the environment that is never an easy one, but then the specification to build up uh, those or such type of uh, research instruments are really important. So the collection of data, the remote handling of everything or of the data. So that's uh, many topics that we could describe, of course, but organization and teamwork are really one of the difficulty. So, but this is what we're working on. So tomorrow on the presentation by Calliope will be more in, uh, so some summary of uh, what I, I was saying that I've tried to put in a nutshell, and then mainly as well uh, the, um, the detector side uh, for looking at the thermal neutron detection at TSS. So that's uh, all what uh, I wanted to pass. Thank you, Christine. Um, we'll take one live question and other questions, put them in the chat, and Christine will answer them in the chat. Anybody has a question? Please raise your hands now because we're running out of time. Don't wait until the last minute to raise your hands. Okay, Coyote, please go ahead. Okay, I actually okay. want to thank you uh, for the lecture. It was very interesting. So, yeah. All right. Any other questions or comments? Thank you, Coyote. It's a lot of information, a lot of link. I try to build it up with all those links to be like a library of, uh, of a bit everything. So I hope that you will find field of interest and, and don't hesitate to contact me if you have uh, any question. At least most of the topics should be there. But there is, of course, much more. Um, for the questions or comments. All right, Christina, uh, thank you very much. That was uh, really good and very comprehensive and complementary to all of the things that we have been talking about and and uh, uh, the importance of uh, neutron sources uh, and all of the applications and all the developments that you guys are doing at the European Spallation Source. So that's that's very good. Uh, thank you very much. So I would propose that we move on. So I will uh, stop the recording and uh, and uh, and I will check what is going on in the other session, and then we will uh, close the 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 breakout room for for the video. Yeah, we need the movie indeed.